Oh my God! I mean, I, I you know, I'm I'm really trying to decide when to take him out of that game. I really thought two innings, the way their batting order was coming through, because Grimm's also a good matchup. So I was going to turn over to Grimm, but I'm saying, my goodness! I mean, he threw like 20 pitches after two innings, and the other part is too, you don't want to lose him for the rest of the series because he's could be very effective against this lineup. So you have all these different thoughts floating in in your head, and. Um, he was so pitchy fish, and he permitted us to do what we did. That comes down to that, that's pure and simple. At four innings, was it 40, 43 pitches in four innings? He permitted us to do that. He was spectacular. He really had redefined his career, hasn't he, at a point where it could have gone the other way. Well, I mean, again, I just came in last year, and uh, as a starter, you know, he had some really good outings. But as a relief pitcher, I think he could pitch for the next 10 years as a left-handed relief pitcher. He's such a good athlete. He gets right-handers out also. Um, he, he, he does so many things well, and he's starting to hit a stride right now. He, start, he started slowly this year. I think there's more hop on the fastball right now than there had been earlier in the year, and I think that's carrying him a lot better with that, his confidence. And I also believe what he did coming out of the bullpen set it up for the rest of the bullpen. Uh, the rest of the guys came in and really were kind of uh, very efficient because they saw Travis go out there and do it. So then here comes Grimmer, and here comes Stropey, and here comes uh, Ronnie. They all were really really efficient. Good pitches, uh, good location, good stuff. But Travis set the tone for the whole day. How worried are you with Jason? Not um, really. We, we were talking afterwards. It seems to have just been a cramp. We just couldn't wait for it to settle down. You just don't know in that particular moment. If it is a cramp, we thought it was a cramp. Um, but you just can't stand out there for 15 minutes and wait for it to dissolve, whatever. So we had to move it along at that point. At this particular moment, we think he's going to be fine for his next start. That's what I'm saying. That's why Travis, what he did, I mean, he really kept the, the bullpen defined well for tomorrow. And he got Jake tomorrow, he got Johnny the next day. But he still permitted the bullpen to be defined tomorrow in a good way. Uh, Travis, it is, you don't see that, man. That was the combination of the number of innings, number of pitches, and how 12, 12 in a row? 12 in a row? I mean, that's not bad. I'm guessing he was only effective Yeah, I mean, he had a good hack, hit it straight up. Um, but uh, he'll get his knock. He still has the. I mean, he does, I don't even know if this guy ever takes batting practice or when he does, but he still has a good swing. Joe, uh, you, um, you ever allow yourself to think how many ways this team can beat a, an opponent? Like um, honestly, I have not really thought of it in those terms. Um, I look out, and I'll tell you, I like obviously the pitching, and I look at the pitching and the defense first always. I know we've hit, love our offense, but. Uh, today was a real classic example when you're playing a good team to be able to pitch and play defense also. We're able to do that. Um, you look where Dexter's can't play today, and then you throw Zoe out there, big knock as a leadoff hitter, and you put Baez at second base, great play in the ball game, uh, puts down a nice bunt, which really uh, created some havoc among them. Uh, David Ross, uh, you know, finding the fountain of youth, man. Ponce de Lee, Ross. I mean, it's just incredible what he's doing out there. And um, give them all credit. Jason um, played a nice center field today. Uh, when guy, when somebody's unable to play, I feel very good about who we put out there. I do. So we've talked about this before, but Memorial Day, maybe the nicest day of the year, the crowd and the atmosphere at the end had to be something. It is. It's, uh, it's you know, it, it was all of that, but it's almost like that all the time. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's Memorial Day or not. Our people are here all the time. Our fans are here all the time. And it always feels like it felt today. It just happened to be a holiday. And I'm sure the people in the stands really got into the spirit, no pun intended. Um, so I, I, uh, it's just, I always feel that way at Wrigley. It's just it's a unique baseball um, venue, atmosphere, situation. You talk about defense on that one blue pit that they had. Yeah. It was just like perfect placement with the sun effect. Or all it was kind of like the pop-up uh, to right field the other day that uh, – fell on Kyle. Um, so had to go a long way. I think also the wind kind of pushed it back to the infield, which uh, I don't – I think Jason really was uh, kind of like fooled by that, just a click. Um, I think Javi could have gotten to it, but again, not an easy play. Uh, the sun was a factor, and then I think it got pushed back, yes. I mean, you, we were asking, you know, what you've seen before, seven perfect innings out of the bullpen, five different pitchers, or four different pitchers, yeah. I'm, I'm sure I, I have no idea. You know, I, I, I'm sure we've done something like that. It's just um, I don't think it's never happened before. It's just like, like I said, I think it's truly 
Travis Woods day. I mean, it's he set that whole game up. Period. There's no. And Ozo had a big knock. We we made some plays. Um, get a run on a slow roller, and that's another good base running play by Zobris when he scored on the slow roller by Hayward. So you got Zo, and then you got. I still got to give credit to Travis. He was just hanging out in the dugout. I went out to the mound. I'm talking to, to Hammer just to find out what's going on. And then I looked in the dugout and I saw him and I pointed at him. He said, "Me," and I said, "Yeah, let's go." And that's that's how his day began. His first pitch was 86, then 87, then 88, then 89, then finally at 90, about the fifth pitch. I was just going to say, whether it's this or any other factors, is, is he your guy if you need that spot starter or whatever? Is he your guy if you want one more starter? Not necessarily. It could be Cahill too. Um, you know, Cahill's been stretched out pretty well also. So one of the two would just probably depend on who you're facing and what that team presents. Yeah, I, I well, I saw him warming up, and I and I saw the the grabbing of the leg. I'm thinking, whoa! I mean, I thought I immediately thought of last year the calf, you know. So I'm thinking calf, but then I see he's doing the stretch thing. And when I went out there, I said, or I asked him, um, you know, hamstring. He said, yeah. He said, but I think it's a cramp, and he, and he was right. Um, PJ came out that re he said he felt it release a little bit, but not to the point where you felt comfortable with him pitching. And when a guy hurts his leg, a pitcher hurts his leg, the, the, the next is to hurt your arm as you're trying to throw. So you had to get him out of there. Memorial Day is uh, the season's first benchmark. Is there anything you're concerned about? Um, I don't mean to sound pretentious, but I'm not right now. You know, I, I uh, health. I mean, you're always concerned about health. And health and being um, you know, proactive, giving guys days off, making sure people get their rest, um, that would be a really good line of communication among all of us, um, that'd be the biggest thing right now is, is just is just to get guys appropriate rest and somehow stay healthy.